The Well Test Data This comprehensive module covers the well test data acquired during a well test and its interpretation. It begins with the types of data collected, including wellhead pressure and temperature, flow rates of oil, gas, and water, as well as gas composition, basic sediment and water, BSW, and fluid-specific gravities. Learners will also study water salinity, oil viscosity, and the collection of both pressurized and non-pressurized surface samples, along with bottom hole samples for PVT analysis. The module introduces data visualization through pressure, temperature, and flow rate plots over time. Finally, it explores how this data is used to determine key reservoir and well performance parameters, including permeability, skin factor, initial reservoir pressure, radius of investigation, reservoir boundaries and fractures, reservoir limits and size, and well productivity index. This module equips learners with the skills to interpret well test results and make informed decisions about reservoir behavior and performance. Well testing is a critical aspect of petroleum engineering, providing vital data for understanding reservoir behavior, well performance, and the efficiency of production operations. Day-to-day -day analysis of well test data allows engineers to monitor and optimize well performance, ensure equipment integrity, and make informed decisions about production adjustments. The following are key pieces of well test data that petroleum engineers closely monitor during well testing. 1. Rough gas composition, H2S, CO2. Measured using a Draeger pump with reactive tubes to analyze the concentration of hydrogen sulfide, H2S, and carbon dioxide, CO2, which is essential for assessing the potential risks and safety concerns in the well. 2. BSW, basic sediment and water. Measured using a hand or electric centrifuge machine, this data helps in determining the amount of water and sediment in the produced fluids, which is crucial for evaluating well cleanup progress and production quality. As soon as the fluid reaches the surface, the rough gas composition is measured at the choke manifold sampling point. This is done using a sniffer or Draeger pump along with reactive tubes specifically designed for detecting CO2 and H2S. This immediate analysis helps in assessing the gas composition and identifying potential safety hazards, such as the presence of toxic gases. BSW samples are taken from the choke manifold sampling points using two identical 100 ml straight glass tubes as opposed to pear-shaped tubes. BSW samples in the tubes are centrifuged with a manual or electrical centrifuge machine to help segregate the oil, water, and sediment by gravity. 3. Well head pressure. To measure the well head pressure, tools such as the dead weight tester, Foxborough chart recorder, dial gauge, or electronic sensors are commonly used. These instruments help monitor and record the pressure at the well head, ensuring that the pressure is within safe operating limits. 4. Well head temperature. The well head temperature is typically measured using an alcohol thermometer, Foxborough instruments, or electronic temperature sensors. These devices help monitor the temperature at the well head, which is essential for evaluating the well's performance and identifying any issues related to temperature fluctuations during testing. The Dead Weight Tester, DWT. The Dead Weight Tester is a highly accurate device used to calibrate pressure gauges and pressure transducers. It works on the principle that pressure equals force divided by area. Force is applied using a known weight, dead weight, that presses down on a piston or plunger. Area refers to the cross-sectional area of the piston or plunger through which the force is applied. By using precise, known weights and measuring the displacement or pressure caused by that force, the DWT can provide highly accurate pressure measurements. 5. Oil-Specific Gravity Oil-specific gravity is measured using a hydrometer and a thermometer. These instruments are used at the oil outlet separator to determine the oil's density relative to water. The hydrometer provides a reading based on the buoyancy principle, while the thermometer ensures that the temperature of the sample is known, as specific gravity is temperature dependent. 6. Gas-specific gravity. Gas-specific gravity is typically measured using a Ronerex gravitometer, a device designed to determine the density of a gas relative to air. This instrument is crucial for analyzing the composition and properties of produced gas, helping in determining gas behavior and reservoir characteristics. The oil gravity is measured at a given temperature using a hydrometer and a thermometer. The API gravity is calculated by dividing 141.5 by the specific gravity, SG, 
at 60 degree Fahrenheit. This formula gives the API gravity, which is commonly used in the petroleum industry to classify the density of crude oil. A higher API gravity indicates lighter oil, while lower values indicate heavier oil. 7. Oil flow rate. Measured using a 2-inch or 3-inch oil meter at the oil outlet from the separator. This device helps determine the volume of oil being produced from the well. 8. Gas flow rate. Measured using a Barton chart recorder with a Daniel orifice meter, which are tools used to calculate the gas flow rate based on a pressure drop across a known restriction, the orifice, in the gas flow path. These devices help determine the volume of gas produced. 9. Water flow rate. Measured using a 2-inch meter at the water outlet from the separator. This helps quantify the volume of water being produced along with the oil and gas. Additionally, water flow rate can be calculated using the BSW. 10. Water salinity, if any water. Water salinity is often tested by the rig's mud engineer to determine the salt content of the produced water, which is important for assessing the water source, formation water or drilling fluid. 11. Plots of P, T, and Q versus time. These plots represent the pressure, P, the temperature, T, and the flow rate, Q, over time. They are essential for tracking changes in the well's performance and are recorded using a surface data acquisition system. 12. Oil pour point and viscosity. These measurements are rarely requested during a surface well test, but they can be important when assessing the flow characteristics of crude oil, particularly for transportation and processing. 13. Non-pressurized oil sample. Oil samples are taken from the oil outlet separator or tank. The typical volume is 4 liters or 200 liters. These samples are collected in metallic cans and should be grounded to avoid static buildup. 14. Non-pressurized water sample. Water samples are taken from the bottom separator or water sight glass. Similar to oil samples, the typical volume is 4 liters or 200 liters, collected in metallic cans and grounded. 15. Pressurized oil surface PVT sample. Oil samples are taken from the bottom oil sight glass of the separator. The sample is collected in a pressurized oil sample bottle to preserve its properties. 16. Pressurized gas surface PVT sample. Gas samples are taken from the vertical section of the gas outlet separator. The sample is collected in a pressurized gas sample bottle, 20 liters. Note, both oil and gas samples should be taken at the same time under separator conditions to maintain consistency. 17. Bottom hole sample. A bottom hole reservoir sampler is run in hole in front of the perforations to capture a representative fluid sample directly from the reservoir, ensuring it accurately reflects the reservoir's conditions. The well test results. Long-term results are given to the reservoir engineer after interpretation using well test data, bottom hole pressure, generally from final buildup, flow rate at surface versus time, and specific gravities of oil and gas. Geology data, porosity and viscosity. Drilling data, pay zone and well bore radius. Long-term well test results include 1. Permeability, K. Example, K equals 10 milli Darcy, indicates a tight formation, K equals 500 milli Darcy indicates high permeability. 2. Skin factor, S. The skin factor represents damage around the wellbore and perforations due to factors like mud, mud cake, or perforation systems. Example, S equals 10 indicates a damaged formation, S equals 2 or minus 1 indicates a good formation after an acid job. 3. Obtain initial or average reservoir pressure. Measure the reservoir pressure to establish a baseline for reservoir performance. 4. Calculate the radius of investigation, RW, or drainage area. Determine the extent of the area that is being drained by the well, which helps evaluate the reservoir's flow characteristics. 5. Determine the presence of reservoir discontinuities or anomalies. Identify potential issues such as boundaries, fractures, or other reservoir heterogeneities that may affect production using pressure transient analysis. 6. Check reservoir limits and estimate reservoir size. 7. Evaluate well performance or productivity 
versus time from any tendencies observed during the test. Thanks so much for watching. That wraps up today's presentation. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps us keep creating more content like this. See you in the next video.